Welcome back to another glorious day in the core. And today we're doing the last of the bug hunt missions that we've yet to attempt from the initial starter box, which is the atmosphere processing plant. A uh, couple of things I uh, need to point out before we crack cracking with this one. Uh, you'll see some barricade tokens about the place. Now, these doors are not actually barricaded. When they're at the white side like this, they are literally just to remind myself that they are a door and exist. Uh, if I am going to barricade them, I'll flip it instead from the mostly white to the mostly blue side, such as that, when they are actually barricaded. But with this map in particular, with the, the dark hive layout, it is very hard to tell and just remember where doors actually are. So if they're white barricaded, they are not barricaded, it is just a door. So, for this mission then, um, learning some lessons from what we did with the last bug hunt we've done. We've got our team of six marines. Uh, the character that will be leading us is Enraged Ripley, uh, because we really want those three actions and the fact she can have a flamethrower as a backup weapon. Um, I'm really hoping to get that as soon as possible, but I think the three actions are what's really going to help us with this. Uh, we also have a Pone, Vasquez, Drake, Hicks and Hudson as the grunts for this mission. Um, not decided where we're putting them in the APC just yet, but um, we're also starting out with the leader re-equip card on Ripley. Uh, I think the main lesson learned from last time is if we have this one as a starter, we don't have to rely so much on getting to the crates. Uh, we can still equip the Marines with various things as we go along, which is very important and useful. So we won't have to force ourselves down into bottlenecks and choke points just to get those crates. Hopefully we can still get some good gear regardless. Uh, I've also placed down the turrets already. Uh, sentry gun A is down here, looking at these four blips. And because of the line of sight, it is in front and across. So it should see anything coming down from uh, spawn point number two. But uh, if we were to stand in these squares, it would not see us. So hopefully it gives us a little bit of breathing room. Obviously we won't have to go down to the crate of two until it runs out of ammo or past it. Um, but that does mean we can go explore in number one, deal with the zoom there before moving on. Uh, Sentry Gun B is down here, right next to spawn point three. Uh, the idea with this is, obviously if three comes around, straight into a Sentry Gun, but also because it can see all the way along here, and this isn't a black bar, it's just a bit of um, white barred uh, terrain that you can see over, it can see directly into spawn point four. So hopefully Sentry Gun B is gonna hold off three and four for quite some time, and if it doesn't, then hopefully A will do that as well. So it gives us a bit of time to gather our wits, get some equipment before we explore the rest of the map. So fingers crossed that's how it works out. So as always with the bug hunt missions, our marines are starting with just a pistol each, that's it, no other equipment. Uh, we have to go to the crates or use the re-equip card to uh, hopefully get some random stuff that we can uh, equip to ourselves, but the crates would let us pick anything specific, which would be very nice for free. Um, with this one we're just wanting to try and exhaust the entirety of the motion tracker deck and still survive at the end of it with at least one character. We'll have five ran random threat level ones and five two cards at the top of the deck to start the mission. Uh, but from the turn three onwards, instead of drawing the two motion tracker cards we would normally do, we would do four. So it's going to get quite challenging from turn three onwards. We're going to see a lot of Xenomorphs stacking up and that is usually what kills us. So hopefully we can get the gear we need this time before that happens. Okay, so for the APC layout, I've elected to put Ripley in the front with a pwn just behind her and the rest of the Marines filing out. So we're not planning on sticking around in the APC. We want to get out and get some gear as fast as we can. And I'm hoping that a pwn can kind of keep up with Ripley because uh, his lovely little aura of... Uh, Reducing the equipment cost by one is going to be very very useful with other stuff later on So let's crack on with the uh, bug hunt then Okay, then so starting turn one of the bug hunt. So we activate Ripley first and On activation exhaust five endurance cards to take three actions. So one two three four Five. And we're going to have to do that every single time for Enraged Ripley, so that is going to be a lot of cards draining out, but hopefully that extra action she gets as a result of that will help mitigate it somewhat. So, let's get her to move. So, that door is not barricaded, it is just shut, so we can go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and I think we'll just get her to rest there to get three cards back into the deck, just to counteract that five that we've got it out immediately. So as part of Ripley's rest action, first we're going to draw two cards, just for ourselves. 
to combat knives. Uh, not helpful when the pistol is the only ranged weapon we have. Maybe useful for later, but not for right now. So then we'll just recycle the three cards back in. From there then, we'll get the rest of the Marines to ferry out to the APC. They all have a move value of four apiece. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. So when those grunts activated, because of the re-equip cards, we can reveal a card, and if it is a green or blue, we can equip it to them. So start with Vasquez. Flare, eh, why not? Give that to Vasquez, might be useful later. Uh, a poem. Helmet, yes, always useful. Uh, who's next? Hicks. Ooh, smart gun. Okay, didn't really want that to go with Hicks, but uh, it's better than not having it. So we'll give that to him for now, and that of course means he has to take away his pistol because you can't have a backup weapon with a smart gun. Uh, Hudson next. Helmet, yes please. Been quite good with these. And at the back, Drake. Pulse rifle, perfect. Okay, so that is not a bad bit of equipment to start off with for the Marines. So, going into the alien phase then. Okay then, so start the alien phase for turn one. Activate aliens, none currently on the board. Activate blips, there's quite a few. Uh, so, blips on this board, they move. Two spaces. First one, one. Sentry gun A sees it, takes a shot, seven or less on either. Yep, destroys. Next one, moves one. Sentry gun sees it, not forgetting, of course, to reduce the ammo count. Sevens. Six, yep, destroys. Next one, one, still in line of sight, spends the ammo. Sevens. Yep, destroyed. Last one, one, can see it from there. Sevens. Yes, destroyed. So, Four shots taken out of sentry gun A, four blips destroyed, and five shots remaining on ammo. Uh, what about blips on this board then? Those two, they move five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, just around the corner from Ripley, there is a black divider there, so we can't see them just yet, but they are literally bearing down on us. Uh, these two blips here on the other board, they move two. Uh, one, two. One, two. So, first motion tracker card. Blip on two. Exhaust one card for each character within the line of sight of the blip when it spawns. Spawn point two is way up there, so nobody can see it. Uh, next one. Exact same thing, but blip on one. Uh, blip on one is all the way back there. Nobody can see that. So, that is the aim phase done then. Moving into turn two. And starting with Ripley then, so she is in rage, so we immediately uh, exhaust five cards, one, and let's take a look at these blips here, shall we? So we'll step one, two, three, four, just down to there, which has got line of sight on there, but we don't have line of sight on these, because even though that door is open now, the black line is there, so just these two blips. Ooh, oh dear, that is nine total. Uh, let's get some models on the board. So Ripley has ran off ahead and caught the sight of two quite large packs of Xenomorphs bearing around the corner. So, uh, first action was to move, but we get two more because she's enraged. So let's fire off that pistol, shall we? So first shot into the lead one, hits on a seven or less. Uh, does, and spend a card for a second shot, hitting on a six or less. Does not. So only one Xenomorph dies from the first action but she has a second one, so let's fire the pistol off again, this time hitting on a five or less. Misses, but we do get to spend a card to shoot again, four or less. Yes, kills another. Very good to see. Uh, and that is Ripley done then. Uh, so we need to activate some grunts now. Well, Vasquez and Opponent are kind of like blocking the access point over there, so we do need to get them to come down first. So we shall get Vasquez to move first. One, two, three, four, just down to there. Uh, so you can't see the Xenomorphs there. Um, 
but we definitely want them to be doing some defensive fire later on. But I don't want to block line of sight for Hicks or uh, Drake when they come around with their actual weapons. Uh, but would they even... I'm not even sure they could get around there with that speed. We'll just move Vasquez to here, one, two, for her second action. So that's done. Oh, also reveal a card. If it's blue or green, she gets to keep it. It is not. Um, okay. Let's do a pound next then. One, two, three, four. Still can't see. Um, we'll keep him there and we'll get him to rest to recycle three cards back in. Also, because of re-equip, we get to draw one. Nope, don't get that. Has to be blue or green. Okay. Hicks is coming down next with the smart gun. One, two, three, four. Still can't see, so we do get have to get him to move. One, two, three, four. So obviously he can't shoot now after taking his second action, but he can defensive fire later, which is the important thing. Uh, Hudson then. One, two, three, four. And we'll get him to rest as well. One, two, three. Also forgot to reveal the cards for the re-equip, so we'll do it for Hicks first. Grenades. Uh, ooh, can't have because he's got a smart gun. So, nope, afraid not. No grenades for Hicks. And Drake, uh, no, Hudson, who was just the one that moved. Nope, don't get that. Okay, finally then, Drake. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. So I've got quite a nice firing line then for when these Xenomorphs come around the corner. Uh, reveal a card for Drake. Smart gun. And do you know what? That's kind of his jam. So yes, we will get rid of both of those to let him have a smart gun. So we've got two smart guns in the team now already, which is quite handy. Let's hope they do some good for us as we move into the alien phase then. Okay then, start the end phase. Active aliens. So these ones come in. One, two, and have a go at Hicks. Um, let's get Ripley to fire off her pistol first, because the first one is free anyway, and you can never hit on three or you always hit on three or less at least with a pistol. So first one looking for three or less. Nope. Spend the card to shoot again. Still three or less because it's a pistol. No. Um, Vasquez is next in line. She has a pistol. Taking a first shot, hitting on a six or less. Star kills one, spends a card, five or less. Yes, Vasquez. Quick double tap makes short work of those Xenomorphs. And then the bigger stack is moving in. One, two, three. Again, having to go at Hicks once the uh, leaning Jenga tower of Xenomorphs stays upright. Okay, uh, so let's get Ripley to fire again with the pistol, three or less. Nope, spend the card, still three or less. Nope, uh, Vasquez with a pistol, four or less with the first one. Yes, kills one, spends another card, three or less. No, but she did manage to kill one, which is very tidy. Never going to complain with the dead Xenomorph. Uh, next then, let's get, uh, where's Hudson? Yes, he can see, so we'll get him to fire his pistol off. Six or less. Nope, spend a card, five or less. No, uh, not good. Who else have we got to shoot? Uh, does a pound have a line of sight? Yes, he does. So we'll fire off his pistol, six or less. Kills one, spends another card, five or less. Kills two. Good job of pound. Two Xenomorphs down. Only two left, and that's before the smart guns have even opened up. So, um, let's get Drake to fire his smart gun first. He's trained for it, so uh, we only exhaust two cards instead of three for him to fire. Both dice hitting on fives or less. Misses! Oh, you were supposed to be trained for this, Drake. What happened? Um, Okay then, let's get uh, Hicks to fire off his smart gun then, spending three cards to do so. One, two, three, hitting on six or less on either. That is a six, kills one, spends another card full auto, fives or less on either. Yes, mows them down. So, the lucky find of some smart guns and other equipment has definitely helped us on this one because we've seen off two quite sizable swarms which is very nice to see at the end of turn two. So, moving then into, no wait, motion tracker cards. 
Two of them for this one. First one. Single blip on three. Uh, reveal a card. It is green, so we don't place any additional ones. So just a single blip on spawn point three. Down there. Next. Uh, blip on four. Uh, reveal a card as well. It is green. Nothing happens. So single blip on four. Speaking of, I forgot to move the blips. These have come in later, so they do not move. So let's move the rest of the blips on the board. These two on here, move five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And these two that were on this board, they move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Definitely line of sight to the Marines. What are they? Three and four. So less sizable than the last two ones, but still a threat. Let's get some of those models on the board. So some more swarms have come bowling through the door. Uh, not particularly great for us, but uh, we've got the whole turn ahead of us then as we move into turn three. Okay then, so first of all, Ripley activates and we need to exhaust five cards for it to do so. One. So question is, do we hold position or do we push forwards? Because uh, there is a, a blip on that single crate back there, but it is just a single crate. We could potentially go in and grab that. And if we can get Ripley a Flamer early on, that would be really nice. Uh, we're not going to get it this turn, though, because there's a Xenomorph's block in the way. But we could at least try and thin them out before they know to be chargers. So we'll get Ripley to move. One, two, three, four, five to there. Uh, for a second action, then, we'll open up with the pistol into these ones here. So hitting the first one, then, on a 7 or less. Yep, kills it. Spends a card to shoot again. Six or less. No. So just kills the one. So one from that stack of three is now gone. There's just two left. And we have a lot of other marines with weapons. Um, hmm. Let's get Ripley to rest again. Uh, drawing two cards first for the rest action. Oh, yes. Nice. Um, can't equip that now, but we can do it next turn, and we'd definitely be wanting to do that. Um, but yeah, then we just uh, recycle three cards. One, and let's get rid of those combat knives, we don't want those. Okay, so that's Ripley done, so rest of the squad then. Uh, let's start off with Hicks. Um, do I want to draw stuff for the re-equip? Actually, it doesn't say May in there, it just says whenever you activate a gun, so I guess I don't get a choice. So, revealing for Hicks then. Hallie's Hope Map, exalt this card in time to shuffle the motion tracker deck back in. Yes, definitely grabbing that. Um, so, let's hold our ground because we can see those Xenomorphs from there and just open up with his smart gun, spending three cards for the privilege because he isn't trained with it. Hitting on sixes or less. That's a three, kills one. Spends a card, five or less. Kills another, spends a card, four or less. No, but we did manage to completely annihilate that first group of Xenomorphs, which is very nice. Uh, he would only be hitting on threes or less for the next one, so let's not do that for now. Instead, we'll just get him to recycle three cards back in by resting. Uh, next then, we kind of want our other smart gun, Drake, to step forward and have a look. He currently can't see because of that divider, so we'll get him to step up with four. One, two, three, four. And he is going to open up into those Xenomorphs as well, spending just two cards, because this is what he does. And hitting on fives. Uh, kills one, spends a card. Fours. Yes, spends another card. Threes. Yes! So how many is that dead now? Three. Uh, one, two, three. So there's only one left. Uh, I think we can probably polish that off with someone else's pistol. Uh, and we may even not even have to spend a card with that. So we're not going to continue opening fire with that one. So we are very happy with three he's killed. Okay, next then. Uh, let's get because he's currently blocking the way now, isn't he? So we'd kind of have to stack up behind him. Let's get Vasquez to step up. One, two, three. And she can still see through there, so she'll fire off her pistol, hitting on a six. Star kills it. Good job, Vasquez. 
So that's all of her actions done. Oh, also forgot to reveal. Uh, revealing a card for Drake. Pistol, he's already got a smart gun, can't use it. And revealing for Vasquez. Ooh, com link. At the end of the character's activation, reveal a card. Choose another being to make a move. Ooh. Ooh, that is good. Yes, yes. Definitely taking that. Okay, uh, let's activate a pound next. And first off, you reveal to see if you get something. Combat knife. Uh, no, we kind of don't want that yet. So we'll just get him to move up. Actually, no. Let's get him to stay where he is and rest twice. Let's get some of these cards back in for a total of six. And Hudson will get to move up. One, two, three, four. Uh, also revealing for him. Uh, we don't get it, it's yellow. But we'll get him to rest as well, getting three cards back into the deck. Okay, and that is all the Marines done. So, on to the alien phase. Uh, activate aliens, currently none on the board. So we activate blips. So, activating blips on this board, this one here. He moves six, uh, one, but somehow the sentry gun all the way over there sees him because of line of sight. So, spends an ammo, kills it on sevens or less. Yep, destroyed. Away goes that blip. And how far does this blip here move? One. Uh, one. Here's the rattling of gunfire next to it, wants nothing to do with that. Blip up here. Move six. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, oh, actually. The black line's there, so the sentry gun could see it from there. So, sentry gun A takes a shot, sevens or less. Yeah, destroys it. Four shots remaining in sentry gun A, but that blip is no more. And this blip up here moves five. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody can see it. It's two xenomorphs. Okay then, so blips are done, so let's go to motion trackers. Now it is turn three, so we are drawing four motion tracker cards at the end of each turn from now on. So, first one, uh, recycle a card, yes please. Next one, <laughs> recycle a card, go on then. Ah, uh, here we go. Place a tunnel token in a square that's within line of sight and next to a character. Well, Ripley's the only character, so we place a tunnel token and we shall place it there. And then we reveal a card. It's blue. Place two blips on every tunnel token. Well, there's just the one so far, but that's still two more blips than we would have liked. One, two. Right in front of the Marines, so we can see them. What are they? Uh, not many, thankfully. Just a solitary one each. But there's still one more motion tracker card. Blip on one. If it already has one, it moves a bit. Uh, spawn point one does not have any. It just appears there. Um, can we draw a line of sight to there? I don't think we can. Okay, so let's get those xenomorphs on the board. So just a pair of xenomorphs uncurl from the walls in front of the marines. But there's just two of them on their own. It's nothing we haven't seen so far, so hopefully we should be able to deal with them in short order as we move into turn four. So start turn four. Ripley activates and immediately exhausts five cards. One, two, three, four. Five, and we definitely want to equip it with that flamethrower we've got. Uh, now then, are we within four spaces of a pwn? One, two, three, four. No, we are not. So it costs four cards to exhaust to do it, but I think it is probably worth it. One, two, three, four. You become a very expensive Ripley, but you have grabbed yourself a flamethrower. And because she's in range Ripley as her passive ability, she may equip it as a backup weapon. So if we can find a pulse rifle, excellent. And you know what? For a first action, we could probably do put that flamer to use actually, because if we put it there, we can splash onto all four of those xenomorphs, because there's two under that stack. So let's take a shot with that. Spending two cards for the privilege, hitting on sevens or less. Xenomorph right in front of Ripley. Uh, dead. The one just behind lives. First one of the pair up here. Dead, second one of the pair, also dead. So, three Xenomorphs gone, with one quick spurt to the Flamer with just one kicking around, which is very nice to see. Uh, do we want to shoot again? Probably not, it's probably gonna to be too expensive if we keep shooting that thing, and we're already quite deep in cards with the uh, exhaust, so let's spend Ripley's next two actions to just recycle six cards back in. Uh, so, let's activate Vasquez first. Hopefully we can uh, ping off one of the pistol shots and uh, get rid of that Xenomorph, which actually, oh, 
I do it with Duet Drake um, because he's kind of in the way. Same with Vasquez. Yeah, no, let's activate Drake first. Uh, but first we reveal because of the re-equip. Shoulder lamp. Yeah, go on then. And we exhaust two cards from Tafari's smart gun. It's just the one Xenomorph, but he kind of needs it dead because he's blocking the way. It's dead. Away goes that Xenomorph. And for his second action, we'll just get him to shift out of the way. One, two, three, four. So he's got a good line of sight down there for later as well. Activate Vasquez, we'll get it to move down the board a little bit. One, two, three, four. And then we'll get it to rest to get three cards back in from the exhaust pile. Also, we need to reveal for the re-equip. Don't get it. Um, then we'll do Hicks. One, two, three, four. He also will um, recycle three. One, two, three. And for his re-equip, don't get it. Um, Hudson, uh, re-equip, don't get it. We'll get him to... Hmm. Kind of a Pokemon closer, isn't it? Let's go get him to help Drake, I think. One, two, three, four. He also will ex uh, recycle three cards back in. One, two, three. And then finally a Pokemon. One, two, three, four. Uh, revealing for him for the re-equip. Don't get it. And he will also recycle three back in. One, two, three. Okay, so not a lot of action on this turn, but we've got a lot of those cards we spent back into our hand, which is very important, and hopefully we can get uh, Hudson or Drake to run up and grab that crate next turn. So, going into the alien phase then. Right, start the alien phase. Activate aliens. Cody on the board. So, activate blips. Uh, this one here, how far does he move? Six. Uh, one. Takes one step out, and Sentry Gun B immediately sees it. Takes a shot. Sevens or less. Uh, yet yeah, destroyed. That blip goes away. And then we've got this blip up here. How far does he move? Two. One, two. He is now in line of sight of everyone. It's three xenomorphs. So three xenomorphs between our marines and their crate. Uh, so hopefully we can move up and take him out in the next turn. But we've got some motion tracker cards to worry about. And we draw four of them. First one. Blip on two, if it already has one, it moves four. Uh, nothing currently on spawn point two, it just appears there. Uh, next one, blip on three. Uh, again, nothing on three, it just appears in. Next one, blip on four. Exhaust one card for each character in line of sight. Nobody can see four, it's there. And then the last one, two blips on two. If this card's blips are placed on spawn point in line of sight, discard four cards. Uh, where is spawn point two? I believe it's that one up there. It is. So, ooh, can you see spawn point two from there? I think that corner there kind of blocks it out somewhat. So I don't think we can see spawn two, but we do get two blips up there. Okay, and that's everything for turn four. So moving into turn five. And at the start of every fifth turn, we get another one of these ability cards. So let me just have a rummage around and see if we can find something good. Okay then, so I've picked the next ability card, and it's a bit of a curveball, but one I think that'll be quite useful. At the start of the marine phase, you may look at the top four motion tracker cards and then return the cards to the deck in any order, and for an action, I can then shuffle the motion tracker deck. So what I'm hoping this will allow me to do is if I see like two or three really bad cards in there, I can then know that in advance, spend an action, shuffle them in, and so hopefully we can just reserve those really bad Xenomorph cards right until the end of the game until we're all ready and nice and able to deal with them. So, uh, it is the start of the Marine phase, so let's have a look at the top four motion tracker cards. Bear in mind, because it is four of them, all of these would be in play if I just let them slide at the end of the phase. Okay, uh, blip is not placed on the spot, yeah. So one on three, one on three, two on four, but then move each blip in play three spaces. And then this one, recycle all hazards in the discard power if none recycle reveal a card, place a blip on every spawn. Because there are no hazards to recycle uh, in the discard, but um, one or two blips on every spawn, I don't think that's the worst thing right now. Uh, but uh, crucially, I do get to put these back in any order. So we'll put that on the bottom, that on the bottom, then this. And then I'm putting this one last because there are less blips that will be on the board when it activates, so they won't, there'll be less blips that move three spaces. So hopefully 
that will be very useful for us later. Okay, uh, Ripley activates and she exhausts five cards. One. To be fair, it's probably a good way of getting rid of a lot of those xenomorphs. So, yeah, let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And then we'll fire Ripley's Flame it directly onto those xenomorphs there. So, there are currently three in that stack and spending two cards for the privilege. First one dies on a seven or less. Nope, next one. Nope, last one. Ooh, technically cocked. Okay, so one. One dies. Great. Not worth the manoeuvre, but uh, one less, I suppose. Okay, uh, let's activate then Drake, and we reveal a card for the re-equip. Ooh, okay, take a tech, test, if it's past reveal a card. Uh, Drake's tech is two. Uh, hmm. So, kind of don't really care for that one on him. Uh, nah, let's not take that one. So, he will step up. One, two, three... Four, just to there, and we'll open up with his smart gun, spending two cards to do so. Killing the first of those xenomorphs on fives or less. That's a three, kills one. And then we spend another card for the fully automatic, hitting on fours or less. Star, yep, kills them both. Good job, Drake. And that's Drake done. So let's get Hudson to move up. One, two, three, four, and we'll use the second one to have a rummage around in that crate. Okay, so I was umming and ahhing what to give Hudson, but we've gone with a pulse rifle, uh, just because his aim's quite good, relatively speaking, and Ripley's already got a flamethrower, so she's best place to use it already, so I'm thinking stick with the pulse rifle for him, hopefully we can get him some grenades later as well, which would be very useful. Uh, but that's Hudson done. So, uh, moving on to Vasquez, first of all, re-equip, pulse rifle, uh, yes please, she can have that. And, hmm... So Sentry Gunner's still got 400 rounds of ammo left in it. So we kind of don't want to be pushing that way. So I will get to rest twice and get six cards back in the Endurance deck. What does Hicks have? He has a smart gun. So let's get him to step forward. One, two, three to there. So he is in line of sight of those blips. So let's flip those real quick. Four, two, and five. And... We'll get him to rest again to get three cards back in. So why am I not shooting with the smart gun? Well, what I'm hoping is, now that we've revealed them, they are definitely going to move six, and they will hopefully move into the firing arc of Sentry Gun A, which would take them out, which would be very useful. So let's get those models on the board. Whole load of Xenomorphs down at spawn point two, and I'm going to let them be, and hopefully they run straight into Sentry Gun A, both killing themselves and depleting it of ammo so that we can pass later. Uh, next time we've got a pwn, uh, we'll get him to step up four, one, two, three, four, and he will do the same and rest to recycle three cards back in. So now we've only got two in the exhaust, which is quite nice. Uh, also, uh, re equip for a pwn, don't get it. Okay, so that's everything for the Marines then for turn five. So let's go straight to the aim phase. And there are active xenomorphs on the board, it's those ones down there. So where's the line of sight start? Probably this square here. So, first one, one, two, three, four, five, can be seen from there by Sentry Gun A, so it takes a shot, killing it on sevens or less, uh, yep, kills it. Next one moves up six, one, two, three, four, five, six, A can definitely see it, takes a shot, sevens or less. Yep, kills that too. They're all gone. Last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just in the viewfinder of Sentry Gun A. Takes another shot. Sevens or less. Yep, destroys them as well. So, saves us the uh, smart gun ammo from earlier. Exhaust the Sentry Gun so that we can pass later. Yeah, I think that was the right call to make. Okay, what about blips on the board then? So, this one here on three, move six. One, two, three, can be seen by B, takes a shot. Sevens or less, yep, dead. And this blip up here, moves one, one, but is also seen by B, takes a shot, sevens or less, destroyed. Where goes that blip? Cool. Okay then, so onto motion tracker cards now. Now we've already seen what these were, 
So two blips on four, but because we've annihilated all the blips on the board now, yes, they spawn on four, but only these ones move three spaces. Uh, one, B sees it, takes a shot, destroys with the star. Next one moves, B sees, and immediately kills it, gone. So that could have been much worse if we'd have played that after um, all the blips had spawned all the uh, spawn points. So yeah, that was quite nice. Second one, blip on three. It's not in line of sight of character, so it immediately moves four. One, two, three, can be seen by B. Shoots it, kills it. Next one. Another blip on three. If it already has one, it moves four. Uh, three currently does not have one. It stays sitting there. Last one. Recycle all hazards in the discard pile. There are currently none. If no cards are recycled, reveal a card. Blue. Place two blips on every spawn point. So spawn points include tunnels as well. So one, two. A lot of blips on the board. And a lot of them we can see from here. So let's flip those. Four... And one, so five come out the tunnel, up at spawn point one, three, and three, six, on spawn two, two, and three. So, let's get those models on the board, shall we? So, suddenly there are a lot more Xenomorphs on the board than there were a second ago. Uh, hopefully we can deal with the ones at the tunnel and coming out of spawn one. Two should hopefully sort themselves, well, one of them should sort themselves with the sentry gun, hopefully. And the other one should be too hard to mop up, and B... Can take care of two of these at least but yeah I don't think this is dire straits just yet I think that was an okay way of playing it so uh, moving back then because it is turn six but we'll keep it in turn one just because we get any one of these on turn five so we'll keep it as every five turns instead of six just for the sake of simplicity so then moving into turn six and at the start of the marine phase you may look at the top four motion tracker cards so let's see what we're dealing with at the end of this turn Uh, so two on one, one on two, exhaust six cards with one, and two recycles. Okay. So, uh, if it's not on spawn points in line of sight, character immediately moves four. So we'll put that one, actually that doesn't matter in the slightest, does it, when it goes. So that will go, and we'll put the recycles back on before the exhaust six card so that would hit us less later okay um so ripley then and the first thing she does she exhausts five cards one so there are six there and what we could do is because she's got three actions we could actually move up flame them run off uh which might not be the worst idea so we'll get her to step one two to there and we'll get to Fire Flamer at this spot here, so it splashes to all six of those, uh, exhausting two cards to do so. And there's six total, three in a stack, and they die on sevens. So the first one of the first stack, dead, next, dead, next, dead. First stack, gone. And then the second stack, sevens or less, dead, dead, lives. Nice. So that is a full five Xenomorphs taken out by that Flame of Burst. Went much better than last time I'd wager with that. And then we'll get Ripley to move back for a third action. Uh, movement five. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Nice little hit and run attack there with the Flamer. This is why those uh, three actions with Enraged Ripley are quite useful. Okay, uh, let's activate some Marines next then. Uh, who's best to deal with those Xenomorphs? Uh, well, currently Hicks is blocked from line of sight by Vasquez, so we should probably get Vasquez to go first and move out of the way. So, uh, we'll activate Vasquez first uh, for the re-equip, reveal a card, helmet, do as you want a helmet. Uh, I'd rather keep her alive, especially with a helmet, because a helmet you just either pass or you don't, and she's got a low defence value, so the helmet would be quite useful, so we'll get rid of the comm link. Okay, and... That was for the rear quick, so we'll get it to fire a pulse rifle first into that lonely xenomorph on its own. So, spending a card to do so, hits on a six or less. Eight misses. So, missed with the eight, so we'll just get it to step out of the way. One, two, 
so that means then that Hicks has a clear line of sight onto the Xenomorphs himself. Hicks. First of all, reveal for the re-equip. Oh dear. Place on your character. Each time your character activates, reveal a card. Great. Uh, we're going to have to get rid of that soon then, because that's going to bleed us dry over time. So that goes on and Ripley for now. Great. But uh, let's fire off that smart gun for Hicks then, spending two cards to do so. Well, no, three actually, because he's not trained, uh, but he is hitting on sixes or less. That first is even more fun on its own. Actually, no. Do we do the one on its own first? Let's damage the big swarm first, um, because then it'll hit hard, it won't hit as hard if they eventually get to us. So let's do that big swarm first. Six or less. Kills one. Spends a card. Fives or less. Yep, spend another card. Fours or less. Yes. Spend another card. Threes or less. Yes. So he has annihilated that swarm of four so far. Very tidy. Um, yeah, why not? One card, two or less. Let's see if we can polish him off. No. Now, well, worth a try. Uh, still a lot of dead xenomorphs from Hicks, though. Good sharing there. Uh, a pwn, then. Let's get him to fire off his pistol onto that solitary xenomorph, see if he can kill it off on his own. Six or less? Nope, but we can spend a card with his uh, pistol, fire again. Five or less? Yeah, kills it. Nice. So the xenomorphs from the tunnel have been dealt with, which is very nice to see. Um, let's get... Can Hudson see that xenomorph from there? Probably not. It's not worth heading that way to see that xenomorph, so let's double back and uh, it can come for us later, I think. So let's get Hudson to move. One, two, three, four. Uh, could it reach Ripley? One, two, three, four, five, six. It could. So we're going to have to keep some of the Marines nearby to help out. So we'll get Drake to step one, two, three to there. And then we'll get both of them to rest and recycle three cards in a piece. Also, we need to reveal for the re equip. So revealing for Hudson. Don't get it. Revealing for Drake. Uh, do get it, but <sighs> we got that already with Drake before we reshuffled. Yeah, his text skill still garbage, so no, don't want it. Opponent only shot once with his pistol, didn't he? And I don't think we revealed for the re-equip for him. Body armor? Yes. Um, so we'll get him to rest, get another three cards back in. And that is all the Marines for turn six. Okay then, so start the ending phase. Active aliens. So... Let's uh, move these guys first. One, two, three, four, five. Seen by Sentry Gun A. Takes a shot. Sevens or less. Yep, kills it. Away you go all those Xenomorphs. Now, Sentry Gun A is out of ammo. So we'll take that model off from the board. That means we can actually proceed down this way a little bit, but uh, it doesn't mean this one's gonna move without being shot at. One, two, three, four, five, six. Moving this guy up here. One, two, can't go across because that's protruding in. Three, four, five, six. So yeah, just out of range of hitting Ripley, actually. Thanks to that teeny little notch there. So I don't have to worry about defensive fire just yet. As for blips then, uh, we have three blips over here. How far do they move? Four. One, two. Seen by B. Takes a shot. Sevens or less. Yep, that's a seven. Dead. Uh, next one. One, two, three. Last shot from Sentry Gun B. Sevens or less. Yep, dead. Away it goes. But Sentry Gun B is also out of ammo now, so we have no more Sentry Guns covering the map. It's going to get a lot more dicey very quickly for us. So, uh, this blip then moves four. One, two, three, four. Just down to there. And we've got these two blips here. They move two. One, two. One, two. Two. Then we're revealing motion tracker cards, four of them. Two blips on one, one, two, and exhaust six cards. Six, Ripley can see one of those blips from there, so we flip that, it's two xenomorphs, but we've still got some more cards to do. Second one, recycle a card, yes please. Third one, recycle a card, last one, Blip on two. If it's not in line of sight, it moves four spaces. It appears on two, and because of where Hicks and Vasquez are, it is in line of sight, so it does not move, and it's just one xenomorph. So let's get some of those models on. OK, 
Okay, so a couple more Xenomorphs have entered the map. Um, not in particularly great numbers though, so I'm still feeling pretty confident then as we move into turn seven. At the start of the turn, eye on the ball, let's have a look at what motion trackers we'll be getting at the end of it. Two on four, recycle a card, another two on four, and one on two. What's the special ones of that? Must uh, either exhaust four cards or place one more blip at two. After you place this card's blips, it moves all blips and aliens four squares towards the nearest character. Ooh. So I'm thinking we can probably get rid of all those xenomorphs on the board, or at least get the marines back together so they can deal with it with defensive fire. Uh, so I don't think we should be reshuffling those just yet, but let's think about if there's a certain way we want to put them on. So we'll put these on first, then the recycle. And we'll put this one with the move everyone four squares right at the top so there are less on the board to move. Uh, Activating Ripley then, first thing she does, this uh, exhaust five cards. Also, we have a hazard now. Place any character each time they activate, reveal a card. Revealing a card, it's yellow, exhaust four cards. Ooh, one, two, three. Four. Okay, Ripley's getting very expensive now. Um, that could be a threat later for us. I think when we roll round to turn 10, we're going to have to find a way to get rid of these hazard cards. Let's not have Ripley fire off the flame out on that one Xenomorph. Uh, let's just get her out of there so we can kind of rejoin the squad and be a bit more useful later on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And for her third action, we'll just uh, recycle some of those cars that we've had to exhaust back in. Let's draw two as well. Motion tracker. And another hazard. Reveal cards until you reveal a blue or five cards. Nope. 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 Well, there's five cards. Uh, discard all revealed cards. If you discard one or more hazards, shuffle the card back in the source. Otherwise, discard this card. Okay, so that one gets discarded as well, but that's a lot of our cards that are also joining it in the discard pile. Not great. Uh, we did pick up the motion tracker though. What does that do? Free action, reveal a card. Look at the top two of the motion tracker, place one of those at the bottom of the motion. Oh, okay. Okay, and because that's a free action, we can combine that with our eye on the ball one. So we'll get the information first, hope for a green or blue, uh, green or yellow, and then we can place one of the cards at the bottom of the deck. That could be very useful. Uh, yeah, we can't put it on her just yet, but definitely something for next turn. That'd be very handy. Activate Hicks with his smart gun. Uh, first off, reeling for the re-equip. Oh boy. <laughs> Place this card on your character. At the end of the character's activation, exhaust two cards. In addition, discard two cards. Uh, boy. So we're going to have to keep Ripley out. Luckily, she's been this turn. So she has already gone past her activation. But, um, mm. so we're going to have to keep Ripley out of line of sight of aliens, basically. Right, okay. Um, something to potentially deal with next turn. Great. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what were we doing? We were activating Hicks, that was his re-equip, so let's fire off his smart gun. Spending three cards to do so. Shooting into those two Xenomorphs up there. Hitting on sixes or less. Kills one. Spends a card. Fives or less. Yes, uh, kills them both and let's try and go for that one down there. Spends another card. Fours or less. Yes, kills them. Excellent. So, those Xenomorphs are dead, as is that one. Good job, Hicks. Uh, then we'll get you to rest and recycle three cards back in. So, let's activate Hudson next, uh, firing his pulse rifle into that Xenomorph first, um, doing the re-equip. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, and I've shuffled these cards three times this game at least. This is just nasty. Okay, uh, reveal the cards. Uh, blue, green or yellow exhaust, eight endurance cards and then discard. If it's red, discard six and then discard. Well, most of the reds are gone at this point. So uh, reveal a card. Yeah, it's a blue. Exhaust, eight endurance cards. Great. One, eight, and then we discard that hazard. Okay. <laughs> we are, we're fast running out of cards because of all these hazards. 
At least there's no, not many Xenomorphs on the board that we have to contend with as well. Okay, uh, right, so yeah, find the, uh, the Pulse Rifle, spending a card to do so, hitting on a 6 or less. Yep, kills, nice. And Hudson can't see that other Xenomorph from there, so he can't shoot that. Uh, so we'll get him to step back four. One, two, three, four. That's him done. Okay, as for Drake, uh, revealing for the re-equip. Combat knife, uh, he can't have it, he's got a smart gun. So we'll get him to move back four. One, two, three, four. And then we'll get him to rest to recycle some of these cards back in because we desperately need them. Yeah, don't think Vasquez has been. So revealing for the re-equip. Ooh, shotgun. Uh, oh, and she could have that in addition to the pulse rifle. Yeah, why not? We'll give her a shotgun in replace of the pistol. And we'll get her to rest twice, getting six cards back in because, oh boy, do we need them right now. And that is all the Marines done for turn seven. Okay then, alien phase. Uh, there is an active xenomorph on the board that we've seen. It immediately moves six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that door is currently closed, we can't see it from there. Um, yeah, and that's it for active xenomorphs, so let's do some blips. This one here, he moves three. One, two, three. Uh, these two, they move three. One, two, three. And this guy up here, he moves four. One, two, three, four. Again, can't see him because that door is closed, not barricaded. Okay. Motion tracker cards then. Fun times ahead. Do blips on four. Uh, after you place this card's blips, moves all blips and aliens four squares towards the nearest character. So, placing two on four. One, two. Make sure we'll stick the second one there. Move all blips and aliens four squares towards the nearest. One, two, three, four. Can be seen from there. Two xenomorphs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wasn't just blips. No, it is aliens as well. One, two, three, four. Okay, so they come through there. That door is considered open now. And I don't think we can draw a line of sight to it yet, though. So that blip is still hidden. Next one. Recycle a card, please. Next one. Another two blips on four. Players must choose either to exhaust four cards or place one more blip at spawn two. I think we can handle a blip at two. So let's get a blip at spawn two. Is in line of sight. It's four xenomorphs. And last one. Blip at two. If it already has one, move it four spaces. Uh, there is one. We, ah, we should have put that down the other way, didn't we? Come on. It is there, so it moves four spaces. One, two, three, four, and we can see it. It's a single xenomorph. Let's get those models on the board. Okay, then, so a couple more xenomorphs coming in. Nothing mega uh, terrible that we need to worry about. Potentially a conga line forming down here, though, and that's not what we want. But uh, a problem for a later turn, I think, as we move into turn eight. Okay, at the start of the turn, eye on the ball. Let's see... Uh, what motion trackers we'd be dealing with. Uh, blip on two, discard a barricade, I'll put another that was spawn one. Single blip on three. Two blips on each tunnel and spawn. And uh, three blips on each tunnel and spawn. Okay, so <laughs> we know they're there. And when it comes to turns, I think we're going to shuffle the motion tracker deck because, oh boy, I don't want both of those going off at once. That'll be terrible. I don't think it'll matter which order we'll put them back in because I have every intention of shuffling that deck. Uh, Ripley activates then. So, first of all, each time we activate, reveal a card. Blue. Discard two cards and shuffle this card into the exhaust part. Oh, the exhaust, not the discard. So... That goes into the exhaust, and then we discard two cards. Great. Uh, that's one less hazard on Ripley, though, I suppose. Um, and that activates at the end of the activation. So, Ripley needs those Xenomorphs dead. Otherwise, we're going to start having some major problems. Because there's not really anywhere... There's not a corner I can run her into and hide where she won't see a Xenomorph, so... 
best option is to press forward, kill them, uh, or at least hope we can kill them. In fact, no, maybe not even press forward, because uh, we can fire the flame in there, and so we'll know if we'll kill them or not. No, we kind of have to move forward anyway because of those xenomorphs. So yeah, so we'll get Ripley to move. One, two, three, and she'll fire a flamer directly onto them, exhausting two cards. Two xenomorphs there, dying on sevens or less. First one lives, second one dies. One xenomorph, okay. We need it dead. Uh, it's not good enough that someone else kills it because then we'll still be discarding cards, so it is worth firing that flamer again, exhausting another two cards. That xenomorph dies on seven or less. Yes, uh, it's gone. Great, so Ripley is not in line of sight of aliens when she finishes a turn. Hard wall there, hard wall there. Great, so that does nothing, which is perfect. Okay, uh, so let's get Hicks to activate. First off, reveal for the re-equip, don't get it. Then we're gonna spend his first action, find the ball. We're gonna shuffle that motion tracker deck because I don't want those cards there, they are terrible. So, motion tracker deck is shuffled. Uh, so, let's then get Hicks to fire off his smart gun into those xenomorphs down there. Spending three cards to do so. Killing the first one on sixes or less. Uh, dead. Spends a card for the... Is that four behind him? Yeah, it's four. Hitting on fives or less. Kills one. Spends another card. Fours or less. No. So, we killed one... Two. Yeah, so two Xenomorphs dead from Hicks, and we already used his first action to reshuffle the motion tracker deck with the eye on the ball. So let's uh, activate then Vasquez with her pulse rifle, see if she can polish them off. Uh, first of all, reveal for the re equip. Don't get it. Uh, spend a card hitting those Xenomorphs down there. First one on a six or less. Uh, yep, kills one, spends a card. Fives or less. Yes, spend a card. Four or less. No. So just the one Xenomorph alive down there. Yes, we could get her to shoot again, but I think it's more valuable to get some cards back in our hands at the moment. So we'll get her to rest and recycle three cards. Uh, a pwn then. Uh, let's get the reveal first of all for the re-equip. Don't get it. And you know what? We're going to rest him twice. We desperately need some cards back. Uh, so let's do Drake first then. First of all, uh, revealing for the rear equip, don't get it. And let's shoot down that xenomorph there with this smart gun, spending two cards to do so. Hitting on fives or less. Kills one. Spends another card. Fours or less. Yep, kills them both. Gone. Okay, so that was his first action, and he shot down both those xenomorphs. Uh, there is another blip around that corner, so let's actually get him to move for his second action. One, two, three, four, just down to there. Okay, that's all the Marines done then. So, going into the alien phase. Start the alien phase then. Activate aliens, there is one on the board. He runs six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's the alien. So, blips. This one here. He moves two, one, two. Could be seen from the other side of there, but no one can draw a line of sight to him, so he's still hidden. These two, they move one, one. These four, one as well. One, 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 one. Okay. So, motion tracker cards now. Now, because I shuffled the deck, I have no idea what these are, so might have helped, might not. Let's find out. Flip on four. Uh, if it's not on spawn point in line of sight, it moves forward. No, I can see that, so it moves forward. One, two, three, four. Next one. Blip on two. Uh, it is in line of sight, so it stays where it is and reveals. It's two xenomorphs. Next one. Two blips on two. Either exhaust four cards or put another at three. Uh, we'll have that other at three, I think. And then two more on spawn two, which can be seen. It's another two and one xenomorphs. Last one. Two on three. Either exhaust four cards or place another at one. Uh, well, you've got the two at three. And you know what? You can have the other one at one because I'm not quite worried about that just yet. Uh, but there are five xenomorphs that have appeared at spawn two. So let's get those models on. A couple of xenomorphs coming in from spawn point two. But... Um, 
something of a conga line starting to develop down here. I'm very worried about when it comes down here because then we're going to have problems. But it uh, kind of does look like we have a decent firing position here, you know. So uh, might be able to deal with that on our own way later. But uh, yeah, moving then into turn nine. One more turn and then we can get a card for an ability that hopefully can get that hazard off of Ripley. But we need to survive this next turn.